What if Koridon was in Gen 1 OU? Now, I say Gen 1 OU, but there was certainly no doubt in my mind that Koridon here ubers 100%. I know that might be surprising to some of you because it's a fighting and dragon type, which historically aren't the best typings in Gen 1. But another thing that you guys like to think a lot is type matchups being everything. It's just not. I was talking with someone earlier today about Fluttermane, because it's a ghost type not weak to Psychic or Ground. However, it doesn't really matter, because it has bad moves for Gen 1. Like, good practically nothing. So, even despite its typing being really good, it would struggle. And Coridon is the opposite. The typing... And even with its typing, it's not even that bad, since you have a very valuable electric and water resistance. But even in spite of that, its typing, well, in some ways it's actually pretty good, because since for these videos, I, well, signature moves. <laughs> Fighting type Earthquake, anyone? Yeah. Yeah, that's... That sounds like it'd be good in a gen where normal is the strongest type. And you also have just other amazing moves. You have Hyper Beam, Body Slam, Fire Blast, and with your 85 special attack, that's technically more than Tauros. So Fire Blast will be hitting pretty hard. Sword Stance? Or funny enough, Sword Stance, I'm just gonna make the claim right now. Outside of maybe an Ubers, I don't think Sword Stance is actually worth it. Because Goridon already has an extremely high attack stat with an equally high speed stat. So Goridon's gonna crit a lot. So I really don't see the point in wasting a turn trying to boost its attack when it's probably gonna do around the same amount of damage anyways. In my opinion, while both Fire Blast and Body Swim have like both have some like advantage over the other, I think Fire Blast is better for two reasons one Koridon mirrors being able to burn the other Koridon that alone is pretty good not to mention it is technically your only way to really fight Gengar which is unfortunate but also most Pokemon are supposed to have a counter otherwise they'd run rampant Koridon here runs rampant regardless of what you do because even with this Jex it has fire spin which is insane, because that's a trapping move with a 135 speed Pokemon, which is faster than Jolteon and Mewtwo, mind you. So technically, if you look at it from a theoretical sense, Koridon has no bad matchups, since it can technically fire spin everything into Oblivion until it's in a damage range. Obviously, I'm not going to apply that for most of the other Pokemon, it's going to be different for Koridon outside of other trappers because it always, like, the fact that it's faster than literally everything else minus Electrode, that does inherently make Fire Spin better and does make it a better win con than something that needs to go for Agility and then go for Fire Spin. Koridon can do it whenever, which that alone makes him a great lead since no matter what your, the opponent leads, you could always trap it with Fire Spin, and then switch to something else. But obviously, Koridon works even better as a late game cleaner. When the team is paralyzed, that makes Fire Spin better, or you can just destroy with Collision Course, Hyper Beam, or Fire Blast. Nothing can really stand in your way outside bulky Psychic types. And even then, bulky Psychic types with Recover are the only real things that can really beat you. Now, technically, Sword Stance could maybe be used to take care of the Psychic types. But even then, I'm pretty sure a Critical Hyper Beam does not kill Starmie, definitely doesn't kill Executor or Swellbro. You would need two Sword Stance in order to just one-shot those Pokemon. And those are two turns that they're probably going to use to paralyze you or hit you with Psychic or Blizzard. So... Even in that, in that case, I really don't think Sword Stance would be worth it. Ubers, maybe. Because potentially being able to O-Kill Mewtwo with a really powerful Hyper Beam, or put it into Revenge Killing range, that could be worth it. Not regular OU. 
Now, the stats are also just insane. Just like Maridons were when I covered that a few days ago. By the way, which do you think is more broken? Because Maridon overall has less counters to it. But the things that Maridon does are way more oppressive. Fire spin and then having a real fighting stat move kind of breaks the game. But luckily with these stats, it means even though it's weak to both Psychic and Ice, it's incredibly bulky. 100 HP and 100 defense is on its own amazing. You have 115 defense and with your bowest stat being 85, which is again higher than Tauros' special stat, and it's 20 points higher than Storox's special stat, there is nothing really that can take this on an OU. Obviously, things like Starmie, Gengar, and Swobro technically can, but it's also very easy to just revolve your entire team around Coridon and taking out those threats. Things like Zapdos, which I guess technically does also do good against Coridon, but also just watch out for the Fire Blast a burn. Like that can like you know, eliminate threats. Same with Jolteon. Obviously, Taurus, Snorlax, and Chansey are still a thing. And while all three of them are significantly weaker with Karaidon in the format, they can still do what they do best. Even if you beat Karaidon, you might have a Taurus in you to deal with, or vice versa. It can allow you to play extremely aggressively without any real downsides. And with Fire Spin, everything is technically in a damage range, even resisted hits. But luckily, for things that resist all of your moves, it's a lot harder to get into that damage range without you inevitably missing a fire spin. But I don't think that's enough to really balance it out. So I'm gonna say Coridon is better than Maridon. But it doesn't matter. Both, I believe, deserve to have a shot to be played in OU. But they're definitely Ubers Pokemon. It could be different when I eventually have a Generation Jumbo season that's just Paradox Pokemon. Because I would imagine Iron Bundle being faster than both of them would be huge. I'd also imagine Iron Valiant and other Paradox Pokemon would be able to put up more of a fight. But it's hard to say. I look forward to when that season's going to be. But it won't be anytime soon, because we're still working on Season 3. And the next three seasons are mostly planned out. But still, it'll happen eventually. Let's get on to the replay, shall we? Starting off with the boy himself, Tauros. Now, Collision Course does a lot of damage. That's 90. And Blizzard is only a 3 hit KO. Oh, wait, freezing. Okay, yeah, that's that's something. Technically, Coridon also really hates Paralysis. But even if it's not the fastest thing on the field, it's still incredibly tanky and hits really hard. But this replay right here is irrelevant. Because what do I usually do with my Fire-type Pokemon whenever they can't always get an Oko? That's right, they just go for Fire Spin to get the chip damage. And as you saw there... What's it called? Uh, Collision Quartz did 90%. So just one Fire Blast, I'm pretty sure is more than enough to always put Tauros in a damage range. And a lot of time, it won't even need to because it might just crit anyways. So as you can probably imagine, that's huge. And Snorox does not do much better, because even Chansey and Snorox with Reflect, well first of all, you're probably not getting it up in time, but even if you did, Coridon can probably crit through it, or just Fire Spin you into your inner proper damage range. Coridon really does benefit a lot from the Gen 1 having max, max out EVs and IVs and everything. Chansey benefits from it too, as you can see there. Even with max HP and max defense, it is not enough to <laughs> survive against Coridon. But it's 135 attack, so I don't think any of you were expecting anything different. Next up here we have Alakazam. This is a best case scenario where you have Body Slam for some reason. But it's not the best. Like, a Body Slam and a Hyper Beam, that can kill. And technically a Critical Hyper Beam can kill. So maybe, I had this in bad matchup, but now that I think about it, this is probably more of a could go either way, since Coridon can use Fire Spin, and while it's very unlikely, like, 
you'll get the damage range before you miss. Hyper Beam could be able to finish off. Not to mention, Alakazam can't Oko without a crit, which is huge. And I think that's what, we have, what we're going to see here. Uh, unfortunately, as you see there, Fire Spin does practically nothing. So, it's anyone's game, really. I don't even know for Alakazam if it's worth paralyzing it or not, or if you're better off just trying to go for the kill. It probably depends on the game, but this is annoying. And it really makes you feel like Coridon's probably one of the more toxic Pokemon. But then again, most likely it won't be a big abuser of Fire Spin, assuming you're not garbage. Most likely, you're probably better off just using it once, then pivoting out into your psychic counter, and then taking out later. You would only really stay, stay in like that if you're really desperate. Because obviously, once you're in the range, Coridon going for Hyper Beam is very, very predictable, which could allow them a free switch into Gengar right on. Or Coyster, but uh, yeah. Coyster Corpse does a lot of damage, even though uh, Blizzard also does a lot of damage. And once again, what you see here, it doesn't even matter that much, because you will never just go for Coyster Corpse. You would always go for the safe route and go for Fire Spin. And considering Coyster's defense, or special defense, or special, I guess, it's not going to do that well. Better than, like, other things, I guess, but it's not that hard for Coridon to just stay in here and go for Fire Spin. I don't think it really wants to, because if it does miss, Blizzard could potentially be very dangerous. So this is probably another Pokemon you're just better off uh, having something else to deal with. But out of all the things that Fire Spin can use to, like, make a threat into a, um, into a manageable thing you can take out, I guess. Coyster is probably the best example of that. Because other things you're going to see later, such as Executor, just, like, literally right now. It's the same thing, but with just high special, it makes it so much harder. No, now granted, outside of other Pokemon... Executor, I think, is really half and half. Because while I really don't like having to use Fire Spin as a way to deal with it, especially since, as you saw there, Fire, Sp or Fire Blast didn't do that much. At the same time, Executor is weak to Fire Spin, so you are going to take a little bit more chip than you would with other Pokemon. So maybe this is a quick go either way. Hyper Beam, I think, is just 40-something percent. I don't know. I really don't know where to rank Executor. I think for now I'm going to put it in could go either way. But you could very easily convince me that it's a bad matchup. And this is not a bad matchup. It's just flat out unwinnable. Theoretically, you could just fire spin it forever. But why would you want to do that? Especially when the payoff is having to stay there until Gengar's in 20%. Not worth it at all. Gengar just, like, hard counters Coridon. But considering Coridon's a fighting type, shouldn't really be surprised. And I don't think Coridon would do that much better if it had Dragon Stab. Earthquake, maybe. And now, since Coridon's faster, Jolteon isn't even, like, good as a fast Pokemon with Thunder Wave. On the bright side, though, because of Jolteon's high special, and because Coridon doesn't have any super effective moves, it does have to stay there a while for Coridon to get that damage range and take out Jolteon. So, good for it. It does mean that Jolteon it's technically can do more than other Pokemon. But still, once it paralyzes Coridon, it has nothing you can do. And like I said, Coridon is still incredibly bulky. So even if it's slow, it is not the biggest hindrance in the world. It just means you have to play more carefully. But even if you don't, Coridon has the bulk to survive at least one super strong Blizzard or Psychic. And that also just depends on the Pokemon. Without Stab, Coridon can probably take it really easily. Not so much Jinx, but then again, when you crit, does it really matter? Although I will say, you probably don't want to rely on a crit in order to take out Jinx, because Lopikus, Psychic, and Blizzard, all three of those are equally terrifying to you. And for those of you who are curious, Coercion Course without a crit does about 70%. This is probably the same case as Executor and, and Coyster, I guess. 
maybe a little bit better, but at the same time, Jinx is probably more likely to kill you because of just how great his crit rate is. But I don't know. I'd still cut that could go either way. And probably one that's, in all honesty, more so in Coridon's favor. Now, speaking of favors, Rhydon doesn't get any. A crit destroys the biggest physical tank in the tier. That's not okay. And even without a crit, Collision Course does such high damage. It's just stupid. Not as stupid as Coridon in actual Gen 9. Because despite how broken Coridon is here, at least it's not getting a sun boosted and a 30% boost to your stats while also having a signature move that does a third extra damage. By the way, in custom games, that doesn't really work. At least, I don't think it works, like, given, like, these calcs. So, it's a collision course, it's just a strong move, but it doesn't do an extra third damage to anything super effective. Which I always thought was dumb. Like, why? Why would you even need that? Now, Swellbro here. With your dragon typing, you obviously do a little bit better. Since you can survive at least one super boosted surf. But it doesn't matter too much. Your only real hope is getting a crit hyper beam. Which Coridon does get in this replay. But that's mostly just me just being done with the swell bro. And not really playing around the crit. Which I should have been doing because it's easy. Technically, Coridon could get a crit. And then Swellbro gets put to sweep. And you get another crit. And that can probably put you in a winning position. But do you really want to rely on that? You probably don't. So I'm just going to put Swellbro in bad matchup. But you can convince me it's could go either way. You cannot do that for Starmie, however. That is just 1% or 2% basically. I don't think anyone wants to sit here for 100 turns seeing Coridon desperately trying to take out the Starmie. And don't worry, I did not record all of that. I would never. And luckily his Psychic does a lot of quick work. So, I think Gengar is still a better counter. But Starmie's probably the second best counter in the game. So that's good. Uh, good for Starmie, I guess. Uh, not so much for Victory Bell. Victory Bell suffers a lot. Fire Blast alone would suck, but to be honest, just Fire Spin and Hyper Beam is probably more than enough to take out Victory Bell. Or you can just do what I did there. Since Victory Bell was going to die anyways, I just went for the Disrespect and went for Sword Stance. I will say, even though Sword Stance I don't think is optimal, I can definitely see some builds that are running it. And if Coridon does get a Sword Stance up, it is literally just the most terrifying thing in existence. And there's not much that really wants to face it at that point, other than Gengar. Now Zapdos. Fire Spin makes it annoying, but with your high special, it's not a good win con against you. And even Fire Blast are getting a burn. Not even the best thing in the world either, since Zapdos has a high crit rate. Not as high as Coridon, but still really good. So Coridon will probably lose sooner than sooner than later. But the burn is still annoying. But you're better off just switching into your Rhydon. Still a good matchup or for Zapdos, not for Coridon. Now lastly, we're gonna show the Mubers. Because I feel like it I feel like we just need to see how they do. Like I said before, Sword Stance is probably more viable in Ubers because I feel like you kind of need the high risk, high reward in order to take on the Psychics in the tier. With Mew here, Mew is really tanky. It's really annoying, but Fire Blast could potentially be good for burning it. I really don't have any comments here. I think it's just a straight up could go either way. And last, but most certainly not least, not by a long shot, we have Mewtwo. And yeah, Coridon might be really good, but it is not doing much against Mewtwo. Even with a Sword Stance, it can't just delete Mewtwo with Hyper Beam. <laughs> Which is unfortunate. Still though, uh, it can do a lot of damage against a Paralyzed Mewtwo already taking some chip. That's pretty good. Overall though, here's the tier list. Unlike Maridon, there's definitely a lot more things in bad matchup it could go either way. This could probably be put in good, could go either way, and probably this could be put in a bad matchup. That's probably more accurate. But overall, extremely broken. You guys really need to understand that there's way more of the Pokemon than just type, typings. 
So being a fighting dragon did not matter to Coridon. In fact, I'm going to say being a fighting type is one of the main reasons it's as good as it is. It's just absolutely insane. Just thank god it wasn't also a fire type. Otherwise, nothing here would have been able to take, take it on. I said I'm Mewtwo and Slowbro, I guess. But what do you think? Do you think Coridon's better than Maridon? Or do you think Maridon will be better in Gen 1 Ubers? Let me know in the comments below. But until next time, this is Groundback, and I look forward to hearing from you.